My colleagues, we're in the middle of a battle for the heart and soul of our nation. It's taking place right now in state legislators around the, or legislatures around the nation. And it's really a battle of freedom versus oppression. It's now engaged in an all-out assault on our freedom. In direct contradiction to the principles with it captured within our U.S. Constitution, they are systematically infringing upon our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, and freedom of the press. During the last election, we now have tangible proof that the Internal Revenue Service was engaged in the intimidation of political groups as well as members of the press. In a country that affirmed at our founding that we are all created equal, we now have a federal government that is picking favorites based on political ideology. In May 2011, a conservative watchdog group called Media Tracker attempted to receive tax-exempt status. After a year and a half of no progress in correspondence with the IRS, they decided to take a different approach. They submitted an application to receive payment or receive permanent tax exempt status for a liberal sounding organization called Greenhouse Solutions. The IRS approved their tax exempt status for Greenhouse Solutions within three weeks. The president's brother, Malik Obama, received approval for his organization's tax exempt status within a month. Plus, they backdated his, his exemption for two years. The net impact of this preferential treatment for liberal organizations over conservative organizations was to suppress the vote of conservative organizations during the last presidential election. It now appears that the IRS was used as a tool to suppress the voice of organizations such as Media Tracker, Catholic United Education Fund, Christian Voices for Life, multitudes of Tea Party groups, any organization with the word patriot in it, the Heritage Foundation, families that pursue adoptions, Samaritan's Purse, and even the Billy Graham Evangelistic uh, Association. Perhaps not so coincidentally, light, co light conservative voter turnout has been cited as one of the main reasons why Mitt Romney lost the last presidential election. Now, do you think that their time and financial resources may have been tied up in other matters? Now the same woman who is responsible for the IRS oversight of tax-exempt organizations, Lois Lerner, has been appointed to run the enforcement division for the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. Coincidentally, she was also one, the one who signed the papers for Malik Obama's tax-exempt status. Coincidentally, she was also, uh, and what makes matters worse, even worse, is that Ms. Lerner testified in front of Congress that she did nothing wrong despite growing evidence of her organization's systematic targeting of conservative groups. What policies will she and others of, of her ilk enforce when she has access to the treasure trove of politically useful information courtesy of Obamacare? It's thugocracy at its worst, and it has no place in America. Do you recall Congressman Dingell's interview with Paul W. Smith on WJR on March 24, 2010? I do. He stated that he would take time to put in the, it would take time to put in the administrative policies and procedures necessary to, quote unquote, control the people. It's supposed to work the other way around. Well, that isn't exactly what our, that, I, I gotta say, what he talked about is exactly what the federal government is in the process of doing, controlling the people. Meanwhile, most of us sit back like a frog in a pot full of water as our federal government slowly turns up the heat. My fellow citizens, it is time to wake up. It is time to wake up before all of our freedoms are taken away by people who believe that our rights are bestowed by, uh, upon us by the political par party in power rather than endowed to us by our creator. So what can we do? More specifically, what can we do at the state level right now at this time, nothing is more important than doing everything in our power to convey Obamacare to the ash heap of history. It is already on the path towards complete collapse. We should not be engaged in anything that slows its eventual demise. That means we need to stop anything that enables Obamacare. We need to stop Obamacare so that we can be free to pursue health care solutions that truly do lower costs, expand coverage, and protect consumer choice. That means that we need to say no to Medicaid expansion. If it weren't for the Supreme Court decision, we wouldn't even have that option. Medicaid expansion is the ultimate goal of the proponents of Obamacare. The battle freedom for freedom is now the responsibility of individual states, much as it was back in 1776. 
the world, our nation, our fellow Michiganders are watching. Will you stand on the side of freedom or on the side of oppression? The choice is yours.